I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. Coming up to eight minutes past ten. Time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. Let go of me, Lord. You're hurting my neck. You'll be hurting a lot more if you don't sit down and do some hand wrestling with me right now. You killed a grizzly, you said, with your own bare hands, didn't you? Everybody heard you, right? So, Mr. Guthrie, it's me taking chances. Sit down. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Our hot number is 1130, and $1,130 is what you could win for yourself or a mom you love. It's our WNEW tribute to Mother's Day. On a postcard, put your name, address, phone number, and the name of a mother you care about. Send it to 1130 WNEW by Friday, May 11th. All day that day, we'll be selecting cards at random and presenting the senders with either flowers for mom, $50 so you can get the family together on the telephone, or dinner for four at a Manhattan restaurant so mom can have an evening out. Finally, Friday evening, Bob Fitzsimmons will select one entry to receive $1,130. What a visit with mom that will buy. Get your cards in right away to 1130 WNEW, 655 3rd Avenue, New York, 10017. Because the hot number is 1130. You've changed, Bernard. You're not the man I married. What do you mean, Francine? Remember the way you were, vulnerable. You made mistakes. But now, look, you're confident. Everything you do turns out right. It's that book you sent away for. It's just a catalog mm. from the Consumer Information Center. It lists more than 200 federal publications you can send for. On building, fixing, eating... Buying, selling, working, playing, living... And more than half of them are free. Yes, Francine, the man you married is gone for good. Mm. All right, Bernard. But would you make just one more mistake for old time's sake? All right. For you, oh. I'll just replace that window glass like I used to. Whatever you do, learn to do it better. Send for your free catalog. Just write Consumer Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Francine, send for that publication on first aid. What was that address? Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. This is Lorne Green. It's the year 1880. And we're somewhere in the mountains of Montana, just a few years before Montana became a state. The rider of that horse, sitting with one leg in a stirrup and the other crossed in front of him, is Simon Guthrie, a ragtag-looking fellow, mangy, if the truth be told, the with his tattered radio clothes hanging from his weather-beaten presents. figure, and an odd assortment of possessions dangling from his pockets and saddle. A pair of boots, an old violin case, a clay pipe, a small animal trap, an old beaver hat, all oh, odds and ends of accumulated junk. Horse and Simon move as though they were one. Truth is, the horse doesn't need any directions. He doesn't need any because they're in familiar territory. You've been making good time, horse. For that, you'll be eating well. Deserving it, too. And for me, maybe that woman will be letting me eat without the usual molesting. We'll just have to chance it. The woman Simon is referring to is Eve Mitchell. She runs a little cafe in town, and to Simon, she's just about the best cook in the world. She's pushing 30, but her being single hasn't been because men haven't had an interest in her, especially Ward Hutton, a massive brute of a man whom we're going to be meeting shortly. It's just that Eve Mitchell has set her heart on having Simon for reasons that put him apart from all of his suitors. Word that Simon is in town, back from one of his wandering trips in the mountains, spreads like lightning when strangers bump into the town gossip, old Tim Waters. Hey there! Don't you figure on saying hello to someone you ain't seen in nine to two years? You don't want to buy something. No, I don't want to buy nothing. Just seems to be the decent thing, the polite thing. Well, if you ain't buying, Timmy... We got nothing to talk about. Ah, I can see you made another fortune. It'll do me. 
Lord Hutton still pulverizing people? Still champion Indian wrestler. You think you can beat him? Well, now, maybe I can't do that, but maybe I can sell him some treasures. <laughs> Come on in and watch. <laughs> yeah, he'd be best in you both ways, Simon Guthrie. Well, now, we'll have to see about that. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Lovers, by David Levy. Our stars, June Lockhart and John Larch. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Eastern, Central, or Pacific time, Mother's Day is an important time. Remember Mom with a timely example of sophisticated design. A Seiko watch from Sears. Seiko has a reputation you can count on in styles that range from sporty with leather wristbands to elegant bracelet watches in white or yellow gold color cases. Choose Mom's precision-made Seiko with 17 jewel or quartz movements from Sears. But hurry, Mother's Day is coming May 13th. I know. We'll give Mom a Sears Best food processor with attachments. Oh, sure, money bags. Listen, Sears chopped $10 off, so it's only $49.99. Huh. Three of us could buy it. But would Mom like a Sears food processor? Sure. Complete with four attachments, it can quickly knead bread, chop meat, shred cheese, puree tomatoes. Hey, pizza! <laughs> Sears Best food processor, only $49.99. Save $10 till May 26th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Let Sears Merry Mushrooms coordinates brighten your kitchen with woodsy charm. Save $7 on our four-piece canister set. It's mushroom embossed ceramic ware, now just $29.99. And save $10 over our 1979 spring catalog price on Sears 10-piece porcelain on steel cookware set. Only $39.94. Lead Sears Merry Mushroom coordinates into your kitchen soon. Sale ends May 26. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Over in the corner of the old Longhorn Saloon, Simon Guthrie and little old Tim Waters watch Ward Hutton biting into the stub of a cheroot, gripping the massive hand of another man of equally impressive quality. You want to bet, Simon, on the bigger fella? Abner? It'll be on Ward Hutton. Oh, not with me. <laughs> It'll be a dollar, Abner. Well, now, look who's here. Another wagon load of treasures from the four corners of the world, Simon. What's in the box? No, that ain't to be open, Ward, except by the owner. <laughs> to own it, you have to make an offer, like, uh, twenty dollars? Twenty dollars. Gotta be something very special. Uh, you wanna know? You gotta buy it. Could be a ruby. Could be the tooth of a grizzly. I killed with my bare hands. Either way, it's a rare treasure. You're lying. I'm not saying what it is. I'm only saying what it could be. And I'm to buy it on your word. You're to chance it. What do you want for the whole mangy lot? For everything. Twenty dollars. Yeah. Count them. It's not including the box. No, that, that's another twenty. Hey, give me the box. And the key with it. What? Wait, there's nothing here except... A... It's me, Ward. You own a picture of me. Simon Gusby. <laughs> Why, you... I'll be reminding you of this day for the rest of your life. You won't be here to enjoy it. Let go of me, Ward. You're hurting my neck. You'll be hurting a lot more if you don't sit down and do some hand wrestling with me right now. Oh, wait a minute, Ward. I'm not claiming my strength over yours. You killed a grizzly, you said, with your own bare hands, didn't you? Everybody heard you, right? That's right. That's right. So, Mr. Guthrie, it's me taking chances. Sit down. You got $40 of mine, Simon, and I'm giving you a chance at another 40 Timmy, hold his money. Yep. Let him hold yours, too, Ward. <laughs> yeah. uh, sure, here. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Simon Guthrie. I be ready. Yeah. 
Simon's holding up. Yeah, but not for long. You can bet on it, Timmy. Want to bet, Tim? I ain't sure. Tim, all the bets on sure things. All right, Mr. Simon Guthrie. I've been fooling long enough. Well, well look, if it ain't good old... Ah, he did it! Simon Guthrie walked Ward Hutton. Wait, wait. Just a minute. That was a sneaky thieving trick. Him calling out to look. Only a yellow-bellied cheat. Hold on, Jimmy. Hold on to that money. Simon won it. Simon won it. Turn up, please, for them that wants it. You own the goods, Ward. It isn't as if... A only... man who makes a fool out of me. Better not be such a fool as to forget it. Give me that bottle. He gets downright mean when he's drunk, Simon. You better go. It ain't bravery keeping me here. It's just good common sense. <laughs> keeping my eyes on him here. This wise, I'll know where he is. <laughs> That's being a thinking man. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. Why not ruffle up a window with tradition from Sears Open Hearth Collection? Our inheritance Cape Cod curtains have plenty of big, fluffy ruffles for that traditional New England look that's become an American favorite. They're an easy care permapressed fabric made from 65% Codell polyester and 35% cotton, completely machine washable. Choose from 14 distinctive colors, one of the largest selections to be found anywhere. So carry on a decorating tradition, the Cape Cod look from Sears, available at most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. While Simon Guthrie kept a wary eye on Ward Hutton, and Ward Hutton kept draining the bottle in his hand, the tension began to build up in the old saloon as to who'd make a first move. Simon to leave, or Ward to lash out suddenly in a fit of temper. Tim Waters raced down towards Eve Mitchell's small cafe. Hester, fix the judge another piece of pie. Well, land sakes, he's had two already. You want him to burst? I'll be judging or not whether another slice will burst me or not. Well, look out there. Tim Waters racing down the street. Oh, at his age, too, men don't have no judgment. Running when they should be walking and eating when they should be dieting. My man wouldn't do neither. Which is one reason he's still a spinster, Miss Hester. <laughs> All right, what with all that heavy running and puffing, what's on your mind? You got a message for me? Oh, no, no, for, not for you, Judge, for her. Eve? Well, tell her, man, tell her. Uh, he's back, Eve. Now, uh, that's really telling her. Who's back? Simon, Simon Guthrie, that's who. Oh, are you sure, Tim? See him with my own eyes? Of course I'm sure. That good for nothing. Where is he, Tim? At the Longhorn, I'll wager. <laughs> you wager right, Esther, and he's heading for trouble. And what makes you so sure? <laughs> Judge, we're talking about Simon Guthrie. He always means trouble. And for once, you're speaking the truth. That's not true. He doesn't mean trouble. Well, Miss Eve, you're the last person who'd admit it. Seems how you always been a little, um, how'd you say? You uh, don't, Tim. Tim, is he all right? Well, if you mean does he still have all his legs and arms, he did when I left him. Uh, could I could I ha have a piece of the same pie the judge has, Eve? Hester, he won't be paying for it, Eve. Well, here. Ah. <laughs> mm, yeah. Now, will you tell it whatever it is you were chasing over here for, if you can spare a minute from your gorging? Now, now look. A man's digestion... 
Well, no judge should be aggravating a man right as he's at the swamp. Tim, what's wrong with Simon? <laughs> what's wrong is Ward Hutton. That's what's wrong. He's a bully. Oh, bully willy-nilly. He's sweet on you, Eve. And he knows how you feel about Simon. Oh, the two of them are itching. One to get out, another to see that he gets carried out. <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, I'll go over and have a look. And so will I. A pie is awful good, Miss Eve. Everything will be all right. Both of them like you. One sure to be a winner. Well, I think Eve has an interest in who the winner is to be. Oh, I don't think a lady should be a witness to a pulverizing. Tim, you wouldn't want to deprive a lady of the opportunity of seeing two men fight over her, now would you? <laughs> Come on, Judge. That is, Esther, the whole dang hang of it. The philosophy that's always kept me a bachelor. The outright joy a woman has in seeing two men make fools of themselves, knocking their heads off over her. <laughs> Women. Mm, but she can cook a piece of pie. It's time for you and me, Simon. Now, what be on your mind, Ward? You... I like you, Simon. I've always liked you. You like me? I like everyone. You just happen to be at the bottom of the pile of people I like. Here's my greeting card. <laughs> Get up, you mangy little crumb. I'll be standing, Ward Hutton. And now you'll be sleeping. <laughs> Had enough, Martin Man. You get me on my feet. You've had enough, Ward Hutton. Oh. Oh. Good evening to you, Miss Eve. Oh, Judge, can we get him to my place? Yeah, that's a little far, seeing his condition. All right, all right, now. What's been going on here? Uh, Sheriff, I, I can take care of him. Sheriff, I got some rights here. Maybe I can take him in. <laughs> What's left of him? Sheriff, you best be arresting me for disturbing the peace. I want him in my place. I got some rights. Now, it looks like you got two people wanting to help you, Simon. Look. Sheriff, do I have to get up and fight you, too? All right. Damn, take that. Simon! Fight with an officer of the law. Resist an arrest. Don't you know your duty, Sheriff, when you're face to face with it? <gasps> well, I guess he prefers jail. Oh. I'm sorry, Miss Eve. Oh. May I come in, Sheriff? Oh, Miss Eve, I... Sure, you're always welcome. This jail don't see pretty women visitors very often. Well, I bought some food for Simon. Yeah, well, he'll be needing it when he wakes up. Is he all right? <laughs> Come here, let me show you. Yeah, except for the color under and over his eyes, uh, his kind's always right. Your kind gets the short end. Oh, now, Sheriff. If you know your secret's the town's secret, why don't you give up on him? Giving up on Simon would be like giving up on myself. Thank you for looking after him, Sheriff. Uh, she gone, Sheriff? Sam, you, you lay there pretend to be asleep, listening? What, has that woman cleans you up, brings you food, and you just lay there pretending and not a word of thanks? Sheriff, I needed the rest. And now I'll be having the food. Yeah, you should be thanking her by getting yourself out of town for good. All right, here's the food. I had promised her. Mm, I... mm, that woman sure can cook a mighty meal. Yeah, and she's a foolish woman, Simon. You're her match for passing her up. Oh, now, Sheriff, unless you think it through. Meaning? Meaning that I'd be saving her from making herself more of a fool. <laughs> well, that may be the first decent thing you ever said. On the other hand, it could be worse for man, too. Didn't turn her down. Man settles down with Eve's going to have to learn to sweep, to do dishes, to wait table, you mean to and become something of a prisoner, lose freedom. Yeah, well, he'd be eating good too. Oh. Yep. Oh, she can sure cook. Yeah. Mm. Ah, you got mm. no respect, Simon. Mm. Come drifting back into town, get into trouble in minutes. Get all that attention from a beautiful lady, and, and then you just sit there gobbling up her food. Oh, she won't be mad on me, Sheriff. Oh, no. No, seeing as how I'm going to return her hamper and tell her how I appreciated her bringing me the food. But in my poor condition, you ate it all up. I, I, oh, oh, now, now, you look here, Simon. That's uh, no I... use getting the sweat up, Sheriff. 
When I tell her, and it's your word against mine, she'll believe you know who. <laughs> well, you're probably right. And Ward Hutton's right, too. You're shiftless and you're lying half the time a man's talking with you. Yeah, Richard, smart enough to know the truth. Woman of love's got the most incurable of incurable diseases. And you're just low enough and mean enough to take advantage of it. You talk like you've been on me intimate like, Sheriff. <laughs> mm -mm. That woman can sure cook. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you in the market for a used car? If you are, it would be wise to shop around until you get a feel for the market. It's important for you to find out if the car is covered by a warranty. A used car warranty is limited. For example, it may cover the first thousand miles or 30 days. Remember, however, the warranty is as good as the dealer who backs it. And you check his reliability with your local Better Business Bureau. Also, remember that careful inspection is the key to enjoying a used car. Be sure and look for rust. Check the tires, the shock absorbers, and the operating controls. And incidentally, it's also a good idea to take a test drive. You see, by giving the car the once-over before you buy it, you're protecting yourself against a faulty purchase and a lot of headaches after you've bought it. This has been a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. This very room reeks of dejection, despondency, undusted cobweb furnishings, black drapes covering the window. Here, let me throw them back and at least get some moonlight, if not sunlight, into this place. In the doorway. What is it? <laughs> Madeline! Am I that horrifying to look upon, dear brother? Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. <laughs> Now, of course, Simon Guthrie, for all of his wily ways and tall tales, was a man of his word. And he did return the hamper, as he promised the sheriff. Not without getting a few of Eve's special chocolate cookies for services rendered. He rode up to his favorite tree in a high knoll and sat down to enjoy himself. Horse, I believe we got a visitor. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Simon. A woman says that when she goes all far out to do the opposite. Do I have a say in the matter? I see you haven't touched the chocolate cookies. Avoiding the temptation, you might say. <laughs> Seeing that this spot is something of a garden. Oh, Simon, it's been two years. Well, I just ain't been counting. You gonna sit on that horse? Well, thank you for inviting me down. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Awake and well. Well, I'm not planning to stay on long. I wasn't counting on it. <laughs> that horse of yours is just too human. Yeah, well, just enough animal to be sort of tolerable. That's a nice word, Simon. Tolerable? Well, it does have a pleasing sound. You know, um, I own this piece of land from here down to the river. Oh, you're good at, uh, at acquisitioning. Another good word, Simon. I see a house right over and there. And planning. With two rocking chairs on a big front porch. Right down to the last detail. Sometimes I wonder, after you've gone, what's going to happen? To, to us, I mean. Oh, <laughs> you, you got years of good coming. The best is yet to be. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. That's what I said. You and Robert Browning. He's a poet. Oh, it's what I know is inside you, Simon, that holds me. Your inner beauty. Beauty? Oh, 
Come on, now, look, Eve. You'll be letting yourself see things, think of things I mean no one else could imagine. I know you're not perfect and that you can't read and write. You can spend the whole day ticking off my bad points. No, Simon. It's just because you can't read that I know that what you do say comes out as Browning or, or Byron or... Oh, now, look here, Eve. Now, you, you got your life. Good one. I got mine. Mixed, sort of. Setting out in the hills thinking, not being able to find myself like an ordinary man. Just sitting. Leading a life of quiet uh, sorrow, maybe. Desperation, more than likely. Oh, there, Thoreau, you see? You're part poet, part dreamer, and part philosopher. Now, hold on, hold on. Part dreamer, yes. I, I, I do like to sleep. But philosopher? Me? Most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Like I just said. Oh, Simon, he said it too. Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau. He's dead now. But he thought beautiful thoughts. And here you are thinking them too. That's what you find tolerable in me? Tolerable. Oh, to say the least. <laughs> yes. How, how'd you know I was here? Simon, you always come here. I heard your harmonica. <laughs> Better than my singing. Oh, your singing's not bad. Oh, some folks say it's bad enough to turn good milk sour. Well, if they like the singer, then they'll learn to like sour milk. Oh, Dad, blast this whole conniving, unthinking world. Eve, you make it hard on a man doesn't want to make it hard on a woman. For two years I've been away, fighting, struggling, with me. I stood and stayed away three, maybe four. I, I just don't seem to be... Do you a... think a house would be good up there? There on the highest part? Now, Eve, doesn't matter much what I think. You're the thinker. The man that figures out it's the woman doing the thinking and the planning. That's when he can be sure, maybe, that he's done some thinking. <laughs> that's not that Thoreau or that Browning, oh. No. Some things are pure Simon Guthrie. <laughs> Something's happened, Eve. Look at your restaurant window. It's smashed. Now, who'd do a crazy thing like that? Here, let me help you down. Eve? Eve? Oh, goodness me. It was, it was crazy. I was hanging out some things to dry, and I heard the crash in the glass, and I come around, and I saw him from the back, a big man heading out of town. I already told the sheriff. Oh, good, good. But, but are you all right? Oh, I wish I could have seen his face. Oh, well, now, here, look at this. Why, that's a picture of you, Simon. What could a picture of you be doing on the street? I got my ideas. I'm gonna raise you one dollar, Mr. Hutton. I'm with you, Judge. You in, Tim? Oh, uh, we're thinking. Nobody's finishing this hand. Pick up your money, Tim. Oh, what's troubling you, Simon? It's what's going to be troubling Mr. Ward Hutton. Stand up, you miserly oh, no, stupid no, no, skunk. No, 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 no. You'll be eating skunk before I'm through with you. And you'll be leaving Eve Mitchell alone from now on. I'll be going for the sheriff. I'll get Miss Eve. He's coming out of it. Oh, one eye's opening. Simon? Uh, did I win? <laughs> you beat old Ward up good and plenty. Almighty Jim Dandy fight it was. Tim's right, Simon. Never figured you could hammer that fella down. Uh, but did I win? Being alive kind of makes him the winner, don't it, Judge? Simon. Si Simon, are you all right? <laughs> I dream of someone with the light brown hair. Oh, what on earth makes a man start singing when he can't even sing? Oh, Simon. <laughs> it's a case of delirium, isn't it, Judge? Are you all right, Simon? Oh, tolerable, tolerable. <laughs> oh. It is the delirium, Judge. Just listen. That's got to drive people crazy. Not Eve, Tim. She likes it. Hip, 
You can be sure she likes it. We best believe it. Shall we stop here? Now, you know you're gonna. Even your horse knows your favorite spot. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you down. Oh, thank you, Simon. When are you going back? You, you can be the most direct... Well, I, I wasn't thinking too hard on it yet. Well, maybe you're through sowing your wild oats? Well, you don't get to doing much of that kind of sowing in the mountains, Eve. You should be having some children of your own. A man starts to sit down if you don't come out with the most... You can be mighty sinful sacrilegious for a woman. A woman isn't childbearing forever, Simon. Well, now, if it's you be talking about... You got no worries. You're young, Eve, not like me. You're young in heart, in ideas, and in your mind. Well, now, I ain't young all over, if you'd be wanting the plain truth of it. We could try. Try? We? We? Us, if you prefer. We? Us? I know they're the same. You, I, we. Now, that's the first word a woman likes is honor when she starts talking with a man. We. How come I never say we when I talk with you? <laughs> You're a man, Simon. And men always say I when they speak. Ah, uh, you can twist a man's thought more than a lasso can twist his legs. Now, if, if, if you don't mind, I, I think we'd best be going back to town. You said we, Simon. Yeah, but I'd I be meaning me. I, Simon. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, always with the last little tripping. I don't think you really want to go, Simon. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Here you are, horse. Hmm. All right, Simon. Don't you think you had enough to drink now? Oh, sure. Uh, I'm still conscious, ain't I? I've got to leave town, Sheriff. Man, it ain't safe in your town. Not on account of what's coming up to the bar, neither. So you got your special bodyguard, Simon. You got lucky once. You want a drink, Ward? Take that. <laughs> Why, you call it. Man can't be expected to take this sheriff in self-defense. I got my rights. All right, now you just hold on to them until we leave. Come on. No, Come no, on, no, Simon. Wait a minute, Sheriff. I, I want another drink. Wantin' ain't getting. Now move on. Oh. <laughs> Have another cup of coffee, Simon. It, it's not that I don't respect her, Sheriff. It's not that I don't even like her. Considering what I've seen in my life, it's even possible my feelings is... No. No, I can't be letting myself think that way. Now, Simon, if if you really like her... Well, unless, of course, you've been telling lies to yourself all these years. Lies about Eve? Oh, no. I don't have to be thinking that I like her. More than like her, if the truth you'll be one. You know, Sheriff, once, some time ago, I let her get real close to my heart, you might say. I come upon her down the creek... She was standing there in that big old boulder. Her hair with a shiny look on it. Her skin pure. Like white marble. Smooth. She was just standing there. Her hands shading the sun from her eyes. Bent over, listening. Listening to a mother bird and her babies. Sheriff, I see it all now. I saw how beautiful she was. How beautiful she still is. You, uh, ever tell her how you feel? Sheriff, you crazy. I've done all I could not to tell her. Yeah, well, she loves you, Simon. Now, don't you think a woman who loves a man wants to hear the same thing from him? I've been fighting her, Sheriff. But mostly I've been fighting myself. I'm showing her my feet. Yeah, yeah, by getting drunk, by running away. Saving her that way, Sheriff. From the likes of Simon Guthrie. Hasn't it occurred to you that she's not wanting to be saved, Simon? Leastwise, not from you, Simon. Saved with you. With you, Simon. Take off on 
on your vacation or to work this summer with Sears four-piece outfit. Wear the jacket shell and skirt or wear the jacket and shell with pants. Or choose a jacket and shell with two pair of pants. You can even wear them as separates. Now that's getting mileage out of your Sears four-piece outfit. Breezy fashion prints and sunny solids. So whatever combination you put on, you'll take off in style. From the dress department at Sears. Here's a riddle for you women to solve. I'm one of the first things on in the morning, one of the last things off at night. With slack skirts and shorts, I look so right. Who am I? Give up? I'm the shirt. The wear with anything shirt from Sears. I come in both pretty pastels and assorted prints with short sleeves and tailored styling. And I'm Easy Care Polyester. So go with the go with anything shirt. For smart spring and summer fashion, buy the shirt in the Mrs. Sportswear department. Your mom. By nature, she's different than any other mother in the world. Whether she's social, romantic, offbeat, or as classic as apple pie, you'll find a special fragrance to fit her nature at Sears. For Mother's Day, choose Revlon's Charlie for the contemporary woman on the run. Chantou, the essence of ever-so-soft romance. Or Prince Machiavelli favorites like Windsong, Aviance, or Cachet. This Mother's Day, discover gifts of fragrance that capture the nature of every woman at Sears. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Norn Green again, and here's the concluding act of The Lovers. As you may have suspected, Simon could no longer remain a holdout. And the last one to find out was Ward Hutton when he visited the old Longhorn. Give me a drink. Well, help yourself. The place is empty. Where is everybody? Funeral? Oh, something like that. A wedding. Could have knocked me over when I heard about it. You mean sheriff's getting hitched? No, not him. It's Simon. Simon. <laughs> Simon Guthrie is getting married, empties the Longhorn. His marrying Eve Mitchell empties the Longhorn. She wouldn't. Not to the likes of him. Well, she's already done it. Yep. Yeah, you hear that? Going east for the honeymoon. I don't believe it. Coming back in two weeks, I hear. I'll be waiting. Oh, our favorite spot. Yeah. You had it figured a long time back. Yep, right here. Let me help you down. Yeah. Now, this is where the porch will be. Right here, Simon. You sure? I'm sure. Zan, I'll be marking it. Give me the pick. <laughs> Heaven, that's what this place is, Simon. Just look at it. Uh, sure is pretty, all right. Here, let me mark the last corner. Oh, I can't say I don't prefer working with a pick on the ground over chalk on a slate. Here, take a look. Yeah, the bread's baking real nice. Hey, let me see now. Oh, Simon, that's very good. Simon E. Mm. That's your name there and mine over here. Well, you've learned them well. Oh, I... I like the way your name looks. And now we have to teach you a lot more. Eve, at my age, learning that whole alphabet? That's work. <laughs> <laughs> it beats me down. It's uh, b injurious. Oh, well, that's a very good word, Simon. You like it? Very much. Except for the way you use it. Oh. Wrong, that it? Well, not exactly. It's because you know that learning's not injurious. You mean it's not injurious for real? Hmm. And you know it. Yeah, I reckon I do. Okay, let's get on with it, because... I know you ain't never going to be satisfied till I've read all of your books. And written some, too. <laughs> Lord Almighty, there's an ambition. <laughs> oh, the restaurant's not open for serving, Ward. I didn't come here for no supper. Well, then you can be going nice and quiet-like. Think you can make me? Well, if I have to, I can be trying. Sit down, Simon. Ward, get out. With you? Yeah. Put that gun down. Hester! I hear you. Go and get the sheriff. And you, Mr. Simon Guthrie, 
Don't you be trying to reach for that shotgun. Now, you ain't going to be coming in here and telling me nor anyone else around Simon, here. Simon, please, don't. Now, stand back, Eve. I'm warning you fair. And I'm telling you out and out. Simon. Now, you best be leaving or I'm going to... Oh! Oh! You seen him, Hester. Eve! Eve! <gasps> It was my reaching for the shotgun and turning, oh, sir. You can't be blaming yourself for what you did. That Ward Hutton, drunk he was. Yeah, well, forget him. He's locked up. <laughs> oh, Doc. Doc, how is she? Well, the bullet didn't kill her, Simon. That doesn't mean she's out of trouble. She lost a lot of blood. Take a lot of caring. Oh, that I got a lot of. She'll be needing plenty. Can I see her? Oh, she's sleeping now. Hester will be a big help. Will she be all right? Well, she'll be a lot better seeing you when she wakes up. I won't believe in her. She won't believe in me. A little praying in order. Is she... She's going to be all right, ain't she, Doc? I mean, that shot, it, it's been four weeks. Now you must remember, she lost a lot of blood. Hmm... <laughs> It's pneumonia now, Simon. Oh, can, can she die? You keep telling her what you're doing up there on the hill. That's the best medicine. Make her want to get up there. Simon. Eve, honey. Oh, doctor was here. Just leaving, I, I saw him. Oh, you're working too hard. No, no, not, not too hard. I got your note. Your writing's coming along perfectly. Oh, Eve. I want you to see the house. I got one room done. Roof and all. A couple of windows in. In a week, I'll be half through another room. Oh, I do want to see it, Simon. Oh, you will, if you will. I got a surprise uh, waiting up there, too. What? <laughs> well, now, if I be telling you, it won't be no surprise. You got to come with me. Simon, I love you. I'll be loving you, Eve. Forever. And if there's anything longer than forever, for that time, too. That much? Or more. I love you, Eve, till it hurts. It's sometimes like pain, just the loving. Oh. To have loved you and then to have come near losing you. Oh. Well, that would be pain for sure. But even if you'd not loved me, it would have been the worst of loving you, Eve. Simon, you, Abraham Cowley, and Alfred Tennyson. <laughs> you mean I got two of them with one notion? Oh, Simon, such a notion, such a man. Oh, Eve, I want you to rest. We got to get you well. We? You said we, Simon. We got to get you up to the hill together to see my work. Promise. Promise. Oh, well, sure. How do you like them? Well, I didn't know you could make rocking chairs. Well, Eve always figured on two of them being right there on the front porch. <laughs> what brings you out here? Uh, Doc wants you to come. Sheriff. Sheriff, she's all right. Uh, a story. <laughs> Color. I, I don't know, Simon. She's been that way for some hours. That's why I sent the sheriff. What's to happen, Doc? It's between you and Eve and the Lord. Eve. It's me, Simon. We need each other. The house is ready. Oh. And you promised to come. Simon. She's awake, Doc. She's awake. Yes, I'll be outside. I'll never believe in you, Eve. Never. Promise. I swear with my life. 
How do you feel? Beautiful. Loved. Thank you, Simon. You won't ever leave me, Eve? Simon. I need you, Eve. You mustn't leave me. You can't. You gotta see the surprise I got for you. You're a good man, Simon. You gotta promise, Eve. Simon, my dear. Promise, Eve. Promise. You'll never leave me. I promise, Simon. Now you'll be resting. Now I'll be sitting here watching you sleep. I love you, Simon. I love you. Doc! I'm here, Simon. She's sweating hard. Oh, that's good, Simon. Yes, that's good. You hear that, Eve? She's going to be all right, Simon. Oh, Simon, I could have ridden my horse. Oh, no, you... You visit your hill in style. Now, just around this here bend... There. You can see it. Oh. Oh, the house. Oh, it's beautiful. You like it? It's just the way I dreamed it. Now, look. Over there. On the porch. The surprise. Oh, Simon. <laughs> the way you dreamed it, Eve. Two rockers. For you and me. Oh. Us. Forever, Simon. Oh. Longer and forever. <laughs> Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. Today, Sears rekindles this spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. And now, a special message of interest to shoppers across America from Sears. Everybody has been talking about inflation. Well, here's what Sears is helping to do about it. Starting the 1st of May, all prices in Sears Spring General Catalog will be reduced 5%. This means a discount of 5% will automatically be taken off the price of anything and everything you order from the Spring General Catalog between May 1st and July 31st, 1979. Also beginning in May, Sears retail stores across the nation will reduce their regular price of selected items, which means you can expect even greater values. In addition, for limited periods of time, Sears will sharply reduce the price on scores of items in our retail stores. Watch for these Sears super values on TV, radio, and magazines, and your local paper, and you'll benefit from price cuts each month. Everyone wants to control inflation. These are some of the ways Sears is helping to do it. Sears, where America shops for value. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Lovers was written by David Levy. Produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were June Lockhart and John Larch. Featured in the cast were Michael Rye, Jack Manning, Vivi Janis, Tom Holland, and Tom Brown. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CVI.